Good morning, everyone. So happy to be here. Uh, let's talk about software supply chains for DevOps. I'm Isla Greenberg. I'm senior software engineer at GoGo. I'm the tech lead of GCP's container analysis and container scanning to, uh, team. I co-maintain Graphics and Critics open source projects, and I hosted the first uh, software supply chain track at QCon in San Francisco in 2019. So I've been in this space for a, couple, for a few years, and I'm excited to be here with like the crowd. And I can be found on Twitter. So what makes um, challenges in software supply chains particularly unique? Um, the concept of software supply chains isn't really new. We've had the term software development lifecycle for a while now, and um, the way I see it, software supply chains is basically that, but in the cloud ecosystem. So what makes it especially challenging these days is that not only are we running our production workloads in cloud, which is you know, just a fancy word for someone else's computer, but also we're now using the third-party vendor dependencies, open source dependencies, so it's just increasingly more complex to vet every single thing that is going into building application, running it, the platform that's running on, and all the tooling that is involved along the way. Um, here's the diagram from the Salsa website, and you already saw that in the premiere of Operation Salsa. So what it shows here is the software supply chain from source, and then it gets built with the dependencies pulled in, and, um, and then it gets packaged and shipped to the customer, whether it's a container image, binary, um, and so on. And as you can see here, every step of the way, there are multiple uh, attack vectors that make it very problematic for us to ensure that what we're running is what we intend on uh, be running and it has everything we need and nothing else in it. So let's talk about DevOps in clouds. We'll be talking a lot about the secure as uh, security aspects of it, so I wanted to um, cover the other side of it, the operational side of things. Same software supply chain as we saw earlier, just the one that we'll be using for the rest of the talk. So we have our engineer who writes source code. It gets built, tested, and then uh, some static analysis tools run, and then deploy checks. Uh, make sure that the right thing is deployed to production, and now our code is running in production. So now, imagine we get woken up at 3 a.m. by an incident, so our pager goes off. What do, we, what do we do? The first thing we do is you know, go look at our graphs, tracing some of the logs to try to figure out what's going on. And now that we need to do root cause analysis and impact estimation, everything with it, uh, across the software supply chain is now under suspicion. And so we will look at every single stage um, and what happened and what changed and what might be triggering this page. And so in order to be able to query for this efficiently, we need a universal artifact metadata so that we can look at everything that happened while the software was being built and then deployed to production. And then also we can look back at it so that if we, when we roll back our software, we can make sure that we can still look at what happened in retrospect. So now let's talk about some of the existing solutions on Google Cloud. So for the first, for the source, uh, we have our code source, uh, cloud source repositories. And so it allows you to design, develop, and uh, securely manage your code. Uh, here's an example of what it looks like. You can deploy a specific version of your code from cloud source repositories using the cloud, uh, cloud functions. And then this way, it makes sure that you know which version you're deploying when you roll back to the version that was running OK last week you also have a way to uh, track that along the way. It also integrates with cloud audit logs, so I can look at my error logs and then try to see what piece of code it's coming from, what line of code it's coming from, and then see if this is new code or a new traffic shape that is triggering this page. So what it allows me to answer is what new code uh, could have caused this incident? So moving uh, down the software supply chain, we have build, test, and uh, cloud build allows you to build, test, and deploy on the serverless cloud CICD platform. So what it allows me to answer is, how is this binary affected by the incident? Build, tested, and deployed. Did I miss any checks? Uh, did I have the right build configuration? And so on. Now going down further, uh, we have our scan and analysis stage, and that's where my team um, comes in. So uh, on-demand scanning, container scanning are the two products that my team owns. 
On-demand scanning allows you to scan container images locally uh, on your computer or in a registry. What this looks like is we have a gcloud command, which is basically a CLI, that allows you to scan an uh, Ubuntu image, for example, uh, Ubuntu latest, which is uh, local on my computer, and then it will extract uh, packages and um, make sure that uh, all the analysis are run and then display the results, as you see here. Katita scanning is similar to on-demand scanning in that it scans images in artifact registry and GCR, but also it allows you to monitor vulnerability information to keep it up to date. So if a new CV comes out or there's an update, there's a fix available, severity has been revised, continuous scanning will give you those up-to-date results after you push the image so you don't have to repush it. So here's an example of what the vulnerability results look like here. You don't have to be able to read everything. Uh, I'll walk you through the key parts. So, you know, when I'm woken up at 3 a.m. and I'm trying to figure out if this is okay with the rollback and I can go back to sleep or I should keep investigating, I see there's 74 vulnerabilities and uh, there's zero critical severity, so that's good. Next one, I'll probably dig into high severity vulnerabilities. Uh, I see that there are some fixes um, on this, so maybe I'll check to see if this, is, this could have prevented my incident. And then maybe during business hours, if I really need to, I'm going to dig into more of these vulnerabilities at medium and low severity. So the question I can answer with these products are, what vulnerabilities am I exposed to that contributed to this incident? Going down to deployment parts, so we have binary authorization, which is deploy time security control. It ensures that only trusted images are deployed on GKE and CloudRun. So here's an example of what the binary authorization policy looks like. We'll set up uh, rules, we can allow list images, so if we trust the provider of the image and we say, I know they'll do a good job of making sure that the images I use from them are clean and uh, can be trusted, um, then I can list them there. And then I can create the policy. Um, on the example here, there are two types of policies. So there is allow all images on the left-hand side and then disallow all images on the right-hand side. And there's another kind you can configure where you specify only the images that have been attested can be deployed. So now on the left-hand side, the image is deployed successfully, and on the right-hand side, the pod is blocked from deploying, and then we get an error message. So the question I can answer with this tool is, what policies do I have to prevent bad code from deploying? For example, I want to make sure that nothing I deploy has critical vulnerabilities in it. And now tying all these stages together is the Container Analysis API, another um, infrastructure piece and products that my team owns. So it allows you to store metadata for resource and retrieve it to audit your software supply chain. Here is an example from the public documents. Uh, you see here another basically view of the same software supply chain uh, with the more familiar one saying that source, build, te um, test, deployment checks, um, they can all be represented, compliance checks, they can all be represented within Container Analysis API and Retreat. So the question a host may answer is, tell me everything about this artifact software development lifecycle. So tying it together, we looked at cloud source repositories, cloud build, on-demand scanning, container scanning, binary authorization, and container analysis API as some of the existing solutions today that you can use to monitor and use this tooling for the operating your production workloads in cloud on GCP. Thank you very much.